It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Thursday, May 19th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that is excited to talk about not one, but two draft-eligible prospects today. We've got a forward and a goaltender on the docket. We've been talking a lot of prospects. Am I going to run out? Maybe. <laughs> Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello there. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. You can he- Find Russ Cohen, our draft prospect expert here on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. You'll keep up to date on all the Flyers news and our episodes. You can also email us at LockedOnFlyers at gmail.com. Before we get into our prospect profiles of Adam Ingram and then Paxton Geisel, we are going to get into some rumors fresh from Elliot Friedman and talk about how that affects our perception of what's going on with the Flyers. Locked on Flyers is a free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, or wherever you get your podcasts, even on YouTube. So subscribe, you'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, Russ. Uh, Elliot Friedman is known for dropping little nuggets that he hears behind the scenes. And he had Mm -hmm. a couple of bits about the Flyers in his most recent column, talking about the coaching process where he's saying they're getting closer to starting interviews at this point and that the qualities they are looking for is a strong track record, demanding accountability from players getting buy-in right away and makes teams harder to play against. What do you think? Well, I think one of those coaches is working in television. Why haven't we heard his name? John Tortorella. Like he should have been a name. I thought you were going to go with Rick Tockett there. No, no, but Tockett's the next one. These guys are working in television, right? You could talk to them anytime that they're not working in television. Talk to them get their name linked, talk to them in an interview. TBS would love to float that. We've heard nothing, zero. And I'll tell you why it's disheartening. It's disheartening because they've been technically looking since December. You could make up all this other stuff. We had to create a list and a profile, whatever. You knew you weren't hiring Mike Yo. You knew at that point you should have been coming up with a list. If I were in the, still in the business world, and I had done a lot of hiring in my life, um, my general manager would have told me, or my the boss of the hotel would have told me, um, yeah, even though you got somebody in there temporarily, start looking and start getting your, you know, everything together and start getting ready to hire. And they haven't done any of that. And my big thing is this. You didn't have to be first to Barry Trotz, although being first to somebody like Barry Trotz would have been good because then you have a chance to really roll out the red carpet and give him that one big speech before he ends up going to maybe Winnipeg like you think he's going to. Anyhow, you may have been able to change his mind. Probably not, but you still, you have to give it that effort. The reason you interview all these other people, it's, it's like this. I used to work for a company that competed with another, right? And when I used to have positions available, I would always check with the other big competitor and say, hey, do you want to interview for a job? And sometimes they would, and I would do it without their bosses being around. Well, it's the same thing in any NHL. They're all competitors. And I would learn a lot when a competitor would come in, even just in the course of an interview, there's information I could get that would help me on my search, even if I'm not hiring you. I may learn more about your business. I may get an idea of what people think of me. I may get an idea of what teams think of me. These are the things that the Flyers need to know because right now, this collective group is in a bubble, and I don't think they have enough people that are telling them the straight dope for a lack of a better term. Yeah, I I see what you're saying there. I I do want to say that I don't think it's unreasonable. Like before Barry Trotz came available, I don't think their process is indefensible. I don't necessarily think it's correct, but I also don't think it's indefensible. I, I think that you know, they could be just trying to put something together in a more 
uh, clandestine sort of way. Again, it's a choice, not necessarily the right choice, but it is a valid approach Mm -hmm. to this search. Uh, I think there was another note out there that maybe they especially wanted to talk to somebody who's still in the playoffs. So that's a factor. But that's fine. You drop that guy to the bottom of the list and you interview others while you're waiting. It's true. It's absolutely true. I just think that it behooves us to like not get caught up in some of this minutia, which is kind of what happened in some way with Ivan Provorov, right? Because that was the other note that Elliot Friedman had. Well, all right. Before you start on Provorov, there's one more note to say about agents. So um, there's only a few agents that have all of the basically coaches kind of locked up in the sport. So that's where this information comes out of. And that's why even if the Flyers aren't the ones who are leaking it, eventually it comes out because the information gets out there. And if that information that Elliot has is even close to accurate, that they're just sort of starting, you are starting too late. It doesn't mean you'll make the wrong decision, but you're starting late. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is a valid assessment based on the information that we have now. Absolutely. So going back to Ivan Provorov, just in terms of making a mountain out of a molehill, right? Because a lot of people at that time kind of blew up and said, oh, are they going to trade Ivan Provorov based on him being a little bit frustrated at the end of the season and lashing out a little bit in that press conference? And Chuck Fletcher said, oh, it's fine. Like, we understand that everybody had a tough time Mm -hmm. and that... You know, Elliot Friedman kind of said is now, yeah, it's like, I don't think this Provorov trade thing is a serious discussion. They want to see, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring up Ryan Ellis's name just because. We Can we keep track? All right. So, so but no, I don't want to get sidetracked by that. But I, I want to. No, I want to keep track that, on how many times we bring up Ryan Ellis in the no, office. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to get sidetracked by that. But All right. the thing, the thing is, is that. You know, they do have valid reasons for wanting to keep him. And Mm -hmm. again, mountain out of a molehill. And so I think that just brings us to the kind of discussion where, again, you know, with all of this, I don't want us, you know, covering the team and fandom, you know, your fandom is your fandom and your Mm -hmm. mileage may vary. You're entitled to your own opinion about what they're doing. But I think from my perspective, I don't want to get caught up in the minutia versus looking at the big picture. And to me, the big picture is cohesively, are the flyers doing enough to show fans that the moves they are making are the right way to go? Are they selling it appropriately? So whatever they're keeping close to the chest, that's fine. That's you know up to them to decide what to do, mm-hmm. but that could affect fan perception and they have to consider that. But then they also, at the same time, have to do a good job of selling what they've done. So that's the college player signings. Mm -hmm. That's the Ristolainen deal, good or bad. That's getting Ivan Fedotov over here. That's signing Adam Ginning. I don't think that they're doing that job well enough. And it's affecting how we're perceiving what they're doing with the coaching search, et cetera. Yeah, I think there's some of it is tied together. I can only go by what fans tell me. And I've come in contact with, you know, a fair amount, not like their whole ticket base or anything, nothing crazy like that. But, you know, even the most diehardy of fans are not happy. They're sort of like in the what do you, what else is going to happen with this team kind of now mode. Um, there are some that definitely are dropping season tickets, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so they're going to lose a portion of season ticket holders this year. And to your point they're going to have to try and gain some new ones. And so I don't think they've done much to gain new ones because, you know, the college thing is great, but if you go with the averages and people just say, well, how many of these players make it? Yeah, I can't argue against you because, you know, if you want to talk about impact college players that get signed, yeah, it's a smaller number. And then same thing with Fedotov, like he's not here yet. So it's like until you see him playing, it's not going to matter until you see video of him. So all of these things are just like talking points. Right. And when they call my house and they ask me to spend this money, they haven't done enough yet. Which I want to bring this back to something you said on a previous episode, Uh-oh. which was fortuitous to this conversation, because you said or and I don't even remember if it was on the show or just in our conversations, to be honest. 
But you said that during the season, they were not doing a good job at highlighting our prospects in junior Oh, yeah, I've said that on the show. And in college, right? Yep. And I think that is now coming home to roost now because I don't think the fan base is as excited about these college signings, mm-hmm. about Fedotov, about Ginning. Like, we haven't heard pip about Ginning, like, no. all for, like, two years, practically, from this team in a in an effective way. So I think that all of that lack of attention to detail on boosting the profile of the players in the system is coming home to roost right now. No, I think you're right. Cause I want to say the last two games, they started to show college highlights of the guys that were there brink and things like that. But it's like, you need to show the guys that are coming. I'm going to use this as an example. Um, I don't remember what year it was, but when Derek Stepan was at Wisconsin, that's a long time ago because Derek <laughs> Stepan's still playing, but you know, he's close yeah, to not yeah. being playing. Right. And the Rangers were showing highlights of him at the garden of him at Wisconsin. Like that's, you need to be ahead of that. So when the guy gets there, you're excited. You're like, Oh, this guy, I, you know, cause Brink, everybody knows about If you were in a bubble, maybe you didn't know about him, but the other ones like Yenning just won a championship, right? Did the flyers even put out a post that he won a championship? No, not until the signing happened. Right. We found out through Bill Meltzer doing some digging because he saw that Yitting won a championship, but the team didn't. They weren't aggressive about that. Right. And I think kind of wrapping this up, that's where my concern lies, that they are yeah. not doing the groundwork to sell what they have in order to build confidence in what they want to do. There and is I a sales method for the, that. Mm-hmm. It's called SWAT. Sell what's available yep. today. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, we will be talking more about this, I'm sure, as they make additional moves, as the coaching search continues. We're going to switch over to talking about some draft eligible prospects coming up next. But first, I got to say, I just received a pack of birthday cake puffs from Built, and I have never had anything this delicious before in a protein bar. They are available right now at Built.com. We can't promise they'll be there tomorrow because they're a limited time flavor. So go get them today. If you haven't tried them, you really need to get in on it. Puffs are the best protein bar I've ever tasted. They are chocolate covered marshmallow protein bar. Yes, chocolate covered marshmallow. You can make every day your birthday with Built's birthday cake puffs. They've taken the delicious experience of biting into a slice of birthday cake and covered it in 100% white chocolate and then added sprinkles. And who doesn't love sprinkles? You got 150 calories, but 16 grams of protein, only 9 grams of sugar. It's an amazing option if you're looking for a healthy way to get flavor and variety in your day. Plus, they're made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Go to Built.com and get birthday cake puffs now with the promo code LOCK15. You'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. It's nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from all our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, Russ, our first prospect we are going to talk about today that is draft eligible is Adam Ingram. He is a forward who is currently with the Youngstown Phantoms, not the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, but the ones in Youngstown, as part of the USHL. And this season, 55 points, 26 goals, 29 assists in 54 games played. So right at that point per game mark, which is pretty good. Does get into a little bit of penalty trouble, uh, I would say. Uh, Not a huge offender, but 30 penalty minutes in 54 games is a little bit. Yeah, he's not a pushover. I will say that. Yeah, yeah. And right now, there's kind of a wide range in terms of his ranking, which is intriguing to me. You know, there's one late first round, but then, you know, I think it ranges throughout the second round all the way through early third round. Yeah, he's in the 30s for me. Uh, Early second round, like that second round gold, but he could get drafted in the first round. Um, That's just where I have him ranked. If a team falls in love with him, they could pick him, you know, 28th easily. The thing about him is, so I saw him at the beginning of the year with the uh, fall classic. At that point, 
And I just spoken to him for an article I'm going to do for Elite Prospects. So at that point, he started off on the fourth line. He was a fourth line center to start the year. And that was something where even in that game, he started to work his way up. And and even to the point now, he's playing some wing. He's been playing wing for a little while now, he's, he's told me. Um, but the issue is, if you went at the beginning of the year and saw him, you would kind of have him like pencil marked. But like, I got to check back in on this guy. Because I saw something in this tournament, and we know his name. We know he's a draft-eligible guy. So that's part of it, right? So he is the perfect guy that all of a sudden becomes a draft riser when people start putting in the hard work like now. And, you know, there are people that have been doing it all year. But now they start really, like at this time of the year, even with my own list, I start putting players up against other players to figure out um, what level they're in. And we're going to do some of that on this show. I'll go through some of that process because it's fun. I've written about it. Um, and it really is a way nice. for me to kind of, you know, see where a player's at. And this guy, um, whether he's a center or not, he may not be, can play it. Um, he's growing. He's 6'3". He's probably about 180 now. Uh, he is working on his strength a lot because he understands he has this physical side that he could start to use more when he goes to, like, St. Cloud. Um, he's a goal scorer. Like, this is a thing... He views himself as a goal scorer, and he is. He's got a quick shot. He's fast in transition. He's got a good skating stride. So you're not going to say he's fast for a big guy. He's just fast. But he's also good on defense, like with stripping the puck. Like he's very good at that and can turn that into offense. So there are things about him besides this physical part that when you're getting into the, you know, 20-somethings and you're a really good team, that's when you're, if you're a good team, you could say, hey, you know what? We're not picking again until, I don't know, 40-something. But we like this kid. You know what? Maybe we're going to take him here so no other team gets him. And I could see that happening with him. Yeah, it is interesting because I love these kids who are from, you know, Saskatchewan or Manitoba, like Ingram mm -hmm. from, from Manitoba, right? Yes. And he and, loves Manitoba, like yeah. to the point where he's like I fanatical about it. <laughs> Although by the end of the interview, I think I've talked him into a warm weather climate <laughs> being a possibility for him. But anyhow. Well, at any rate, I think that the fun part of guys like this and the goalie we're going to talk about next is also not from Ontario or British Columbia, is that I think some of these kids often take non-traditional paths for Canadians to the pro game because they're not under the eye of, you know, the greater Toronto hockey league or they're yeah. not as part of the vancouver big youth programs and so th it takes a lot more for them to get eyes on their game and so a kid like this goes to the ushl and is going to play in ncaa as his path versus playing in the chl and i find that fascinating because that's where guys like this can rise in the ranks exactly like you're talking about well he says he has friends in the whl but he took a different path um, maybe, and I think looking into it, I think it's because he was kind of like a skinny, they didn't know exactly what position he was going to play kind of guy. So I think the WHL probably laid off him for a little bit. So he mm -hmm. went this route, um, got the NCAA interested in him. He, um, he likes the idea of an education. Obviously it's, it's parents like that. So that's something where he could check off a few boxes and still play some really good hockey in a really great division in, in NCAA hockey. Yeah, but St. Also, Cloud State is a great spot. Yeah, and he's still close to home, which is good for him. So he could still get to Winnipeg when he wants to. I don't know why he'd want to, but he, you know, <laughs> he wants to. And and he really, like, he really gets it. Like Seattle, I think, holds his rights right now. So you can mm -hmm. never say it's impossible that he wouldn't play, but he, he's not going to. He's going to go through the college system. And this is a guy where I would project – Year two is when you start looking at him and say, okay, where are you at, kid? And that's when if a team has him, which they should, I'm sure he'll get drafted early day two, if not day one. And they'll look at him and see, is he ready to come over? Or do we leave him even one more year in college and then bring him over? And depending on the organization, that's probably what's going to happen with him. And he could be a guy that can come in and score 20 goals in the NHL. And he might do it more as a power forward than 
he is currently at the moment because he's kind of building towards that. Yeah. And those guys never do it early. It's very rare. Yeah, I do think that for a guy like him, having that opportunity to spend as long as he needs to in the college game yeah. is going to be really helpful for him, especially because I do think he needs to work on his skating a little bit and getting mm -hmm. some extra jump out of his skating um, you know, to sort of catch up with his playmaking abilities. Yeah. A little bit, I think, you know, based on what I've seen, that seems to be what he needs to work on the most. And and college, again, is great for that, where they help you work on the little things and, and round out your game. So I'm very happy about that. We talked on yesterday's show. And, and the reason that. if you're asking why we brought him up on this show, in case the Flyers traded to the second round. Exactly. So that's where I was going. We talked on the okay. mailbag yesterday about, you know, what are we willing to give up to trade into the second round? Is Adam Ingram a guy that you put on your list that you would, you know, be willing to sacrifice a couple of extra picks either lower in the draft or in a future draft? Yeah, he had 25 goals this year. I think he's going to score in college. I do think he's going to be a goal scorer. So because he's a goal scorer and he's got all these other attributes that I like, Yes, I'm willing to do that. All right. Well, you know, I'm starting to like this kid, too, as I do with everybody we talk about on the show. I think I have, you know, about 25 or 30 new hockey fandoms after our prospect series this season. We are going to switch over to talking about Paxton Geisel, a goaltender which is always fun and a nice twist next. But first, we're going to talk about our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Paxton Geisel is a goaltender and, you know, we were just talking about the non-traditional path for people in the middle Canadian provinces. Well, Paxton is from Saskatchewan. And so he also has taken an interesting path, uh, not this season, but last season chose to play in the NAHL, which was mm -hmm. such a smart move because he did that so he could get more games in. And Plus, it was also in an area where the uh, the pandemic didn't affect his mm -hmm. playing ability, you know, his ability to get on the ice. Exactly. And so I think getting more starts, getting more experience, you know, working on your development and your goaltending technique is the way to go here. And so he was rewarded with a spot on the Dubuque Fighting Saints in the USHL this past season in 40 games played an 897 goals against a 3.13 um sorry 3.13 goals against 897 save percentage and was 25 9 and 3 yeah he this is a guy who goaltenders are different than players and I'll tell you why they know everything is on the slow burner with them they do they know development is slow they know getting playing time is slow, and they're so they're all used to this. They're all used to the waiting game, so they they have to develop mentally first, almost before physically. Where players can do it differently because he understands the mental and physical game, but he really understands the mental part. Meaning, hey, I you know where he's gone, he didn't have to worry about his next start. But as he moves up the ladder, as he goes to college, he might have to worry about his next start. I think he's going to Denver, right? So, yeah. and that's that, a great that's a question. Yeah, it's an interesting thing because to your point, DU is such a high profile school that it might take him a while to get more opportunities in net. Uh, but, but when at you the get same it, time, it's, it's big, when right? you, exactly, exactly. That's, that's the thing. And so you got to kind of weigh that. But ultimately, I think it'll be a good move for him. I do. I think it'll be a good move too. And it is something that he's going to have to, grow into and sort of wait his turn if that's the uh the right term but this is a guy who also uh i i feel like it was last minute got voted into the um all-american prospects game he did really well with that 
Um, made some outstanding saves there. He's a, a smart guy. He is a athletic guy. So he's a guy that can make the big save for you. He can play a lot of minutes. He can play a lot of games in a season. He's used to that already. So I feel like there's not a lot of things that you'd surprise him with. Um, his five holes small. I think um, I've seen him more than a few times be the team's best penalty killer, which is one of those attributes that we always use as a cliche for goalies, but it's true. Sometimes they have to be the best penalty killer. But yeah, I don't think he's going to Denver and is going to be the starter next year. Um, but that doesn't matter. What matters is how he do- develops along the way and he'll get stronger. He'll be practicing at a really big university he'll have all the best training all that stuff so when you draft this guy whether you're drafting him in the second third fourth round you're playing the slow game with this guy like you're not going to see him for three to four years until you see him in the ahl and you're not expecting to see him for like five years in the nhl but that's okay you have to latch on to the right guys like this and if you have a third round pick and you say hey Let's say we get this guy and we project him to be in the NHL in 2025, 26, something like that. That's fine because even though you think you may have a lot of goalies right now in the flyer system, you have to look at it and say, okay, at that point, let's say it's 2026, you know, like four years from now. And let's say he's just in the AHL at that point and could get called up. Well, at that point, You're four years more into Carter Hart. By the time he gets there, maybe five or six into Carter Hart. You don't know where he's going to be at at that point. He's going to have a lot of mileage on him for being in the league as a young player. So you almost do have to pick his next predecessor in the next few years just to cover yourself in case of a career-ending injury or anything like that. And same with the guys in your system. You don't know who's going to age out. You don't know who's going to get injured. You don't know who's going to get traded because you have to make a trade. So that's why you have to keep the uh, the goalies, you know, pond stocked. Exactly. My gut says that if the Flyers don't trade up to get into the second round, somehow that they're going to want to pick a skater in the third round with that right. third round pick. I don't think they're picking a goalie until the fourth round. No, I agree goalies. with you. If that's the tact in they take, draft, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. However, in the 2023 draft currently the flyers have three third round draft picks and i think that's a, a round where the flyers probably take a goaltender yeah right even yeah. if they only have two of those picks left by the time mm-hmm. it, it comes around they will take a goaltender in in next year's draft but i think for this year fourth round is the earliest you think he'll be around by that fourth round pick probably not but it's possible because I think he's flown under the radar for the most part, of it, other than playing in the top prospects game in the All American game. So, you know, there is a possibility because this isn't a massive goalie draft, from what I could tell. Mm-hmm. So, I don't think there's going to be a huge focus on goalies until maybe the end of the second round to start. So, it's possible. All right. Well, another interesting prospect to add to the pile, Russ, of, again, Pax and Geisel, you have a new fan in me, (laughs) especially after watching this profile video from the Dubuque Fighting Saints. And that's our Flyers fun thing today. Man, this kid is so sweet and thoughtful. Yeah, he's a great kid to interview. He is. I really, really liked him a lot. So, uh, of course, I'm going to get attached somehow and he's going to end up getting picked by like seattle or something and then i will be sad all right (laughs) that'll do it for today's show we'll be back again tomorrow very excited we are going to talk all about zade wisdom and get caught up with him with marcus botillier who covers the kingston frontenacs so that'll be great as a reminder we always want to hear from you send in your mailbag questions via twitter at lockdown flyers can email us at lockdownflyers at gmail.com. I am Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your second listen locked on NHL. From first round matchups to each Stanley Cup final victory, locked on NHL covers the playoffs like no other. 
Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. You can catch me on the Friday show. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great day, everyone.